Hello, welcome to the first video lecture of the school year. Uh, today we're going to be looking at the Neolithic Revolution and the beginnings of civilization, uh, which are sections 1.2 and 1.3 in your textbook. Uh, and we have a few focus questions as well. The first, explain how the Neolithic Revolution dramatically changed the way people live. And also, identify the basic features that define a civilization. So, let's get started. First thing we're going to look at is the Paleolithic period. It's also known as the Old Stone Age. Um, and it's roughly going to last between 2 million BC and 10,000 BC. Remember, unlike current day where each year we count up, during BC we're counting down as uh, time progresses. Um, and through the Paleolithic period, um, people lived as hunter-gatherers uh, or nomads. And all the nomad is, is people who move from place to place to find food. Essentially, they're either going to hunt for it, they're going to hunt animals, or they're going to gather it, berries, fruits, vegetables, um, and other things as well. And so what we see is small groups, 20 to 30 people, living together, uh, moving from place to place in order to find food. At this point in time, your one and only goal when you wake up is to find food for that day. Uh, and you really can't think about anything else until you do. And what we're going to see is that around 10,000 BC, there's going to be a dramatic change in all of this. Um, and this is going to be known as the Neolithic Revolution. Um, it's around 10,000 BC, not exactly, but around this time. And what happens is people learn how to farm and domesticate. Um, domestication is simply to raise something in a controlled manner to best suit human use. Uh, so farming is the domestication of plants and, and crops. Uh, the domestication of animals would be to either use them uh, for work or to raise them to eat. And so what we see is that when people learn how to farm, they pe can uh, begin establishing permanent settlements, villages, towns, and other things. And so the Neolithic Revolution is going to give way to the Neolithic period, also known as the New Stone Age. And this is going to roughly last to about 4500 BC. And what we see is that people are no longer hunter and gatherers. They're no longer nomads. They begin establishing these permanent villages and civilizations. They set up permanent farms. They um, can raise uh, animals now. And they don't have to constantly be moving around. Uh, and all a civilization is, is a complex, highly organized social order. Think how we live presently. Millions of people, very complex, and, but it's also highly organized as well. So the next thing we're going to look at are the first four civilizations. Um, and what we see on the map here are those first four river valley civilizations. Um, so as we're going through, um, keep in mind that all of these civilizations develop around a major river or major rivers. So, starting on the far right, in yellow, uh, we see the ancient Chinese civilization, which roughly starts about 3900 BC, and it develops along the Yellow River and the Yangtze River. Uh, and as we move over in, uh, to uh, more in Central Asia, uh, we see the uh, Indus Valley Civilization, which de develops along the Indus River. Heading further to the east, we see, or to the west, I should say, um, uh, we see in the Middle East uh, the Mesopotamia Civilization, which develops around uh, 3500 BC. And Mesopotamia literally translates to between the rivers. In this case, it is located between the Euphrates and Tigris Rivers. Uh, which is in present-day Iraq. And then the final one, highlighted in purple on your map, um, is the ancient Egyptian civilization, which I'm sure most of you know developed along the Nile River. And so what we'll see is they all developed along rivers, um, commonly probably for two reasons. One, travel. Traveling along rivers is uh, much easier um, and less taxing than over land. And two, for food and crop development. Not only can you fish in a river, and not only do animals uh, gather around rivers, but also it helps when it comes to establishing farms as well. The final thing we're going to look at today 
are what really defines a civilization. I gave you a brief definition. Let's look a little deeper into those basic features of civilizations, though. The first, cities. Uh, essentially population centers which are bigger than small villages and towns. Think thousands of people, yet they're still more organized uh, than towns and villages. Um, organized governments. Governments are going to become an important feature because of their ability to organize projects, whether it's related to food production, construction, establishing laws, or even defense systems as well. The third, complex religions. We're going to look at this in the next unit, uh, but we see different religions develop, whether they worship one or multiple gods or goddesses. They're going to develop uh, all over the world and have their own um, different features. Four is job specialization. And what that means is um, people are able to start branching out and focusing on one type of job. Um, and what we see develop is an economy where people have a job and they trade their services or goods with other people. The fifth is social classes. We can think of this currently as we have lower class, middle class, upper class. Uh, it's just a ranked group uh, and it's usually determined by uh, a person's job or economic standing. The sixth is arts and architecture. Uh, all across the world, different societies will develop their own types of arts and architecture which shows off uh, not only their talent, but also their beliefs and values as well. The seventh is public works. These are large-scale projects, usually organized by the government, um, and they're usually there to benefit the city. Uh, one we could think of right off uh, the bat would be um, the pyramids in Egypt, very large-scale project which would need to be highly organized. And the final one is a system of writing. Uh, usually this would develop from um, use in government or religion, uh, but would then slowly move um, as some cut type of uh, important record-keeping system in a society. And so we see those as the eight features that really define a civilization. When people go from being hunter and gatherers to living in small villages and towns to living in much, much larger population centers. So, that concludes our video lecture over the Neolithic Revolution and the beginnings of civilization. Once again, for more uh, reference material, you can head to sections 1.2 and 1.3 of your textbook. And don't forget the main focus questions today. Um, the first was explain how the Neolith Neolithic Revolution dramatically changed the way people lived. And the second being identify the basic features that define a civilization.